Today is July 12th. This video is going to be about taking a picture of the Panstars Comet C2017 K2 Panstars. I'm just going to refer to it as the Comet from now on. So I plan to photograph this in um, about two days on July 14th because that's when the framing kind of works out best. So right now I'm trying to plan out the framing and how I want to do that. If we take a look here. I got it pulled up in Stellarium. This is where it, what it's gonna look like right now. This is in the Celestron 6SE telescope. So if I go over to the 14th, you can see that this star cluster um, M10 comes into comes really close to it. So what I want to do is frame them together like this. I think that would be a really nice shot. options for photographing the comet. Based on the images last night, it's moving too fast to stack multiple images together. So we're going to have to stick with uh, one single shot and that's going to be it. So that means we have to do one single exposure. Um, last night we did five minute exposure so we know that five minute exposure would be fine. Um, but that was that was just on the luminous filter. So if we want a color image, we're gonna have to do on the RG and the B filters, which cuts down on exposure time for a filter because we still have to take it all before the comet moves by a significant amount. So here's the setup. We've got the Skywatcher HEQ5 mount, and what the mount does is well, you put the telescope on it and then it will track the night sky by slowly rotating at the same rate that the earth is spinning so that you can take long exposure images without the sky moving in the image. On top of that we have the Celestron 6SE, it's a 6 inch cement cast grain telescope. Then on the back we have the ZWO um, electronic filter wheel. Right now there's uh, red, green, blue and luminance filters in there. Out of that we have the monochrome camera. Um, it's made by a company called Ryzen Cam, and we got this off of AliExpress. It has the Sony IMX571 sensor, and it's a cooled camera. And then we have a laser pointer off the side. And then under the scope is the guide scope and camera, the ZWO120MM, and the ZWO Mini 50mm guide scope. And on the bottom, we have the Apple Mac Mini, which we control everything from, and it has windows loaded on it. Our acquisition software is Nina. We're all set up now, just waiting for to get dark, so yeah, everything looks good now. And once we get dark, we can start pull our lining and hopefully get focused real quick, and then through to the comet without problem and get going on shooting it. setup.
have the comet and star cluster in the field of view and right now um, it's tracking and guiding and we're taking um, a two minute exposure on red and then a two minute exposure on blue and then a two minute exposure on green. first set of images came in good, um, the RGB with the star cluster and the comet both in the field of view. And now we're centered on the comet. In the previous one with both the comet and the star cluster, both of them were at the edge of the field, which made the stars look weird. So now we're trying to get the comet at the middle to see if it will look better maybe. And then after this, well the moon's about to rise in five minutes, so this is going to be the last thing we do before we pack everything up. Earlier I said that we couldn't stack images because the comet was moving too fast, but I have since learned that there's actually a method for comet stacking. Next time a decent comet comes around, I'll definitely do that method instead. This comet turned out not to be much to look at compared to Comet Leonard and Comet Neowise. The picture only turned out half decent because the star cluster looks nice in it, and because of that I didn't even bother to process the second picture we took without the star cluster. Nevertheless, here is the photo. The star cluster Messier 10 is located 14,000 light years away within our galaxy. Comet Pan-STARRS was discovered in May 2017, and it made its closest approach to Earth at 167 million miles away on July 14, 2022, the date that this picture was taken. After that, it will continue on its orbit around the Sun, getting closest to the Sun on December 19, 2022, before being thrown back into space.